So recently, a viewer, Vaughn, posted this comment up above here, and his request is to do a start to finish design of a pencil box I did. Now, I actually had put this design in a Fusion 360 video I did several months ago. And if you haven't seen that, uh, I'll put a link to that up above here as well. Go watch that if you're interested. And it, it occurred to me and apparently it occurred to Vaughn as well that I hadn't actually done a video on, on creating that pencil box. So uh, in this video, that's what we're gonna do and hopefully you get something out of it. So let's get going. How's it going everybody? Steve here and welcome back to my workshop. And in this video, I'm gonna build a pencil box that I had showed a design for several months ago. Now, there's not anything inherently difficult about this pencil box. The one challenge, if you do have a 40 watt laser or even a diode laser, all of the dimensions here are designed for four to six millimeter, either plywood or acrylic. So you may have some, some challenges cutting through some of this stuff with, uh, with a 40 watt laser. All of the material I'll use here is really just hardware store kind of plywood. So it, it generally has horrible glues and, and sometimes nylon cord running through it. So you really would struggle to cut this with a 40 watt laser, but you can give it a try and, and see if it works. And I did also post a couple of videos in the past about cutting through thicker materials. So you might want to uh, go through the backlog here and, and take a look at some of those. Uh, anyway, without further ado, let's get going on this. We'll start with the design and uh, we'll do a laser cut up and some glue up and we'll have a pencil box when we're finished. It should be a pretty simple project. So to get things rolling here, I've jumped into Fusion 360, which is a 3D design tool. And again, you can download this for free, completely free if you want. And for the purposes of what you would do with, uh, with a laser cutter, the free version will do everything you need to do. Normally, and you can see over on the, on the left side here is, is the composition of all the different parts. Uh, there's really only three different parts in this design. There's the, the four middle pieces, uh, and they're all like, identical, the two ends which are identical, and the bottom. And if I roll it into the bottom here, you'll see the bottom is really just a basic square, and I've cut some slots in it to make sure that all these pieces fit in. And the reason I, have, I show this diagram is because one of the things I also do is uh, I will create uh, what I arbitrarily call an assembly, and I take all of the parts that I'm gonna use and I put them together to make sure they all fit. And that really just gets you to some comfort that when you cut all of these things out, they're gonna work the first time. Now in this particular case, the plywood that I'm gonna use is not actually six millimeter. It's, if you zoom in and I'll show you the thickness of it, it's 5.6 millimeters. And the acrylic isn't exactly four millimeters, it's 3.9 or 3.95. So you want to account for that stuff in your design. And you know, you may have to do trial and error. I'll put all of these all of these drawings up, uh, make them available for free, either SVG or I'll, I'll actually export the, the Fusion 360 design as well so that uh, at least the three parts so that you can bring them into Fusion yourself and play with them in case you use different material or something and you want to change the dimensions of these things. And the way that would normally work is if I just look at the, the bottom, and again, we're not going to turn this into a Fusion 360 tutorial. We could do that separately if, you, if people are interested. But I'll, I'll start by looking at the drawing. And you can see I've made the thickness, uh, this, this hole that I'm gonna create uh, 4.05 millimeters. And that's to, to basically just ensure that the entire uh, thickness of the acrylic fits inside this slot so it's not hanging out over the, over the side. And it also ensures that the slots are snug but reasonably sized so that the, the dividers can fit in here easily. And now after, after you get your, your diagram drawn, you can just go back into the, into the 3D view mode. And all I did was I created an extrusion here. That's basically how it works. Fusion is, there's a bit of learning curve, but once you get through a, a few basic concepts and really all you need to do 3D, uh, to do laser cutting, is those basic concepts. So how do I draw a line, a rectangle, a circle? How do I do an extrusion? That's really all you need. 
And after that, and I mentioned it in the previous video, I used this uh, shaper, uh, shaper tool that's free. You can download it. It's a plugin that plugs into Fusion 360 and, and I can just select the surface that I want and save it to a file. And this will actually save it as an SVG file, which I can load into my laser software. In this case, uh, what I wanted to do is use light burn. So let me just pop it up here and it's set up for my 3624 laser. But you know, if you have a 40 watt or 45 watt laser that can carve through this, this five, six millimeter plywood, uh, you know, more power to you. And then I can just grab my, my files, my SVG files that I exported and uh, just drag it and drop it on. And in this case, this is the bottom piece and I can position it somewhere and I can cut the end pieces at the same time because they're all made out of the same material, same thickness. And I could really tighten them up there if I wanted, but sometimes the laser will do weird things with, with the line cut, so I won't, I won't bother. And I need two of these, so I'll duplicate it. And, uh, and there's our design. Uh, for, in, in the case of my laser, for six millimeter material, uh, plywood, this hardware store plywood, I have 100% power and 15% speed and that cuts through it uh, fairly nicely without a whole lot of charring. So uh, now we're ready to, to do the laser cut. So once we get all of the pieces uh, laser cut, we have to do uh, a quick sanding here. And the reason we're doing that is because we won't get another chance later. So just a quick rub, I use a very light sanding block. It doesn't have to be uh, glass smooth, but it's just to get the, some of the burn marks off and just smooth out the roughness of the, of the surface. The plywood I used is, is finished anyway, so it's not so bad. All right, with the sanding done, next thing is to put just a light coat of, of some kind of stain on it. I use typically Minwax Transparent, and in this case, I'm just gonna use just stain that is slightly uh, off color. You know, I don't wanna make it look unnatural. Uh, this is uh, cherry stain, I believe. So, you know, I just put it on there lightly, and of course, you know, always wear rubber gloves or some kind of hand protection when you're playing with even things like stains. This one is, is latex based, but it, it still, you know, I, I always worry about the safety of these things. So uh, just wipe it on quick, let it sit for a minute or so, and then wipe it off again. And you see, you get a nice kind of wet look wood. And uh, that's exactly what I'm going for here. And now it's finally time to start gluing things up. And uh, I'm gonna start with the, with the wood gluing first, just wood to wood. And for that, I'm just gonna use your standard yellow carpenter's glue and put it onto the tabs and just set it in there. And, and while you're doing that, you have to also put in those middle uh, acrylic pieces. Uh, otherwise you won't get a chance to put them in. And they're not glued, they're just floating in there. Uh, because there's nowhere for them to go anyway. So put them in and uh, put the other end on, same, same kind of technique. And you might have to give these a little tap. The pieces are designed to fit pretty tightly together. 
And after that, wipe off any excess glue. And uh, I typically clamp these things down. You can see the clamp kind of hanging up in the corner there and uh, clamp them down for a couple of hours. And then the last piece here is to glue the acrylic to the wood. And for that, I just dampen the wood a bit where the glue is gonna touch. And the reason for that is I'm using clear uh, Gorilla Glue. And just, so I just dab a bit of water in there and then put the, the glue in and just anywhere where the, where the acrylic is going to touch into those slots. You could also glue the end pieces directly, but I don't, I don't bother because it doesn't require that much strength. And just set the acrylic piece on there and uh, do the other side as well. And I typically also clamp these down so, so they, uh, you know, they, I ensure a good fit there. All right, once the glue is dry, uh, take off the clamps if you have them on there and you have a finished box and it looks fantastic. So really simple and uh, something that everyone will love. And there you go, you have a really simple design, probably made from scrap material that you have kicking around your shop. Uh, in my case, I used a couple of different pieces that I had left over from other projects and uh, you can make these things for pencils. You can make them for just about anything else. So Vaughn, hopefully this answered your, your request and uh, you can now pull down the design and create your own pencil box. I didn't go through a whole lot of the Fusion 360 design details here, but I'm happy to put some videos together specifically for two, two and a half D uh, design for specifically for laser cutting. Uh, if you're interested in that, just leave a comment down below and, and we'll see what happens. And uh, with that, we'll wind the video down. As always, I'll put a video up in the corner here I think you might be interested in. Uh, feel free to go watch that. And if you do, I'll see you over there. Otherwise, get out there, make your world, and I'll see you next time.